Joining us this evening are Susan Chira, foreign editor of the New York Times, and Gideon Rose, managing editor of Foreign Affairs magazine. Susan, welcome for the first time. Nice to have you. Gideon, Thank good you. to see you. Be here. Let's begin with Iran, Susan. And I guess the question is, has the government won? Have the hardliners won? At the moment, I think it appears that um, the government has decided to take a very repressive uh, crackdown, and the opposition is scattered, leaderless, and regrouping. I don't know if the government has won for the long term, but I think for the short term, you're going to see um, a pause, perhaps, um, and this time to perhaps reassess what the strategy is. It's been made very clear by Iran's supreme leader, backed by um, the security forces uh, that he and President Ahmadinejad control, that um, any public protest will be violently suppressed. Gideon, there is a divide that has been made apparent as a result in the leadership of Iran. Do you think this is going to be buried now, or is perhaps the, the, the fighting that we saw on the street politically going to happen behind the scenes? Well, that's a, an excellent way of putting it, because the overt conflict that you've seen in the streets and even among the top leadership in terms of their competing statements and so forth probably will uh, die down, but it won't go away and nothing has been solved. So as to the question whether the regime has won or lost, it's... It's maintained itself in power, it seems like, but at the cost of its internal uh, and ideological legitimacy. So in the long run, this bodes very ill for the, uh, for the Islamic Republic in the long term in terms of being able to maintain itself as a vibrant state. Everyone now sees that the government is in power because it was able to physically suppress dissent and violence. And so while it stays in power, it's not going to be a healthy or very popular state. What does this do for President Obama in his attempts to open a dialogue? What does the rest of the world think when they now look at Iran, President Ahmadinejad? Is he the legitimate ruler? Is this the government we really deal with? Well, I, I, I suspect that um, President Obama's plans to engage Iran, reach out and try to initiate some talks have to be put on the back burner, at least for the time being. There are strategic arguments you can make for why engagement with Iran um, might help address a number of continuing quandaries in the Middle East, but I don't think there's any political way for the president to go forward with that in the short run. Gideon, do you think the international world now looks less at Iran? Well, I think the question is, what will engagement bring you? Because there's uh, there's a political question, as Susan mentioned, at home, he's going to get attacked for any kind of deal or any kind of positive relations with a newly entrenched uh, uh, Iranian government. On the other hand, there's still the fundamental issue of what do you do with the Iranian nuclear program? How do you get them to back down? And that's a real problem. And so, I mean, George H.W. Bush uh, dealt with uh, the butchers of Beijing, the people who were responsible for the Tiananmen Square massacres, fairly soon afterwards, got a lot of grief for it, but ultimately was able to get away with it. So the question is, it, not just will Obama want to engage, because obviously he doesn't want to, but if he can get something through engagement, it's going to be a much tougher call to back down. The neocons who don't want him to engage uh, are happy letting the relations with Iran and the U.S. sort of continue in their very suboptimal way. And if well, Obama of course they can say, can I told something. you so. This right. was a repressive government, and, and you've seen it. Right so now. the most interesting question will be if the regime in Iran comes out of this and says, we need legitimacy, and here's how we're going to get it by cutting a deal with the U.S., and they offer something worthwhile, in that context, does Obama take it? It's a very tough call. Now, Let's, uh, I, I just want to switch because we're going to run out of time. I'm sure. sorry, Susan, to mm -hmm. Iraq. Sure. Um, do you think the American public has moved on from Iraq, that we've already, this war is done, it's yeah. a matter of getting the troops out? And is there a danger to that? Well, it's clear to me the American public has moved on. Obviously, in the Obama administration, it's not their war. That's been made clear in many, many ways. His focus is on Afghanistan and Pakistan. Um, that's the war he would have wanted to fight not Iraq, and a number of signals we pick up um, from various administration officials, both in Baghdad and in Washington, suggest that, you know, they are determined to withdraw almost, almost, no matter what happens on the ground. Um, is there a danger in that? I think you have to weigh uh, the costs of continued engagement with the fact that probably in the short run you'll see some deterioration of security. Um, you have a number of unresolved political and sectarian issues in Iraq that will continue to fester. 
Well, we see already an uptick in this violence as the American troops get to withdraw to their bases there. Is that a real point of concern, or is this just part of the transition? It is a point of concern, and the question is, does Maliki really know what he's doing? And um, the, the Americans are taking a very uh, backseat role. They're giving the Iraqi government uh, what it wants in terms of saying that it's controlling everything. But there are some concerns as to whether that's really the case. And, you know, if the Americans had their druthers, they'd pull out a little bit less quickly than the Iraqis seem to, to want them to. Uh, we'll see whether it, work, whether it works. Mm -hmm. um, the danger here, of course, is that the country falls into chaos again, even as we want to leave. Do you think that sectarian violence is reviving itself? I think the next period of months are going to be a really crucial way to assess. I don't, I can't answer that now. I think these most recent bombings, particularly the one in Sadr City the other day, which was a direct hit on the sort of populist base that began to form the support for the Mahdi army, uh, which among other groups was responsible some, for some of the worst sectarian violence directed against Sunnis as jihadi groups were responsible for some of the terrible violence directed against Shiites. I think there's a, there's a clear risk of that. Um, we also have to look at what's happening with the so-called Sunni Awakening Program. These are the local um, Sunnis that were armed and brought in to try to enforce peace and give information. That had been a successful program. The Shiite governments regard it with suspicion. We'll have to see how that goes, too. Susan Sherry, you get the last word. You had the first word. You're lucky this week. Gideon Rose, thank you, as always. Thank you. Thank you.